Good evening, everybody. How you guys doing? Uh, welcome to another week of forward-looking technical analysis for GameStop. Uh, this week we'll be looking at 10.4 through 10.8. Um, first thing I wanted to start off with, uh, we're going to do this the same format as last week and the week before. I'm going to cover the DD, and then at the end... We will go through and handle some questions for about 15 minutes before I shut it down for the night. Um, good evening, everybody. How you guys doing? All right, so first things first. Um, last week, we saw 9.86 million volume traded uh, with a price decrease of negative 4.46 or $8.25. Um, even though our dollar level decrease was lower than the overall market as you can see below the the spy five-day performance was only down 2.18 percent so you can see there's a little additional you know short interest thrown in there over the last week um why and and i expect this coming week to also just be pretty much flat uh th there will be some price movements which we'll talk about in a second but um for the most part i think we're not going to end the week too much up from where we start it um and the reason for that is i'm still waiting on that futures uh roll anomalies to play out and i don't expect any movement from that until this coming uh this following monday on the 11th um and really beginning on the 13th and on out through the 28th of october um yeah, make sure you guys check out the weekly dd um pinned to my reddit profile uh, which it will be shortly, it's not right now, um, and check out those videos over on the Video DD channel, uh, the fast version and the futures role theories. Uh, both of those videos are available over there for you guys to watch and sort of kind of get on the same page that I'm on with them. Um, so what happened last Thursday uh, is the best theory we've got right now is that 10 million volume that we needed to see on Tuesday of last week uh, we never saw right uh that didn't come to fruition and so that meant that you know there were ftds that they were not able to pack into that pipeline and roll out the extra 23 days um and i think what we saw thursday was the t plus two settlement of that um so what we saw covered were the ftds that in fact spilled over um we're still, you know, going to wait, obviously, till we have data from the SEC on the 15th of October to confirm that. But that's currently the best working theory that I've got. Um, now, let's take a look at our technical analysis for this coming week. If we look here uh, out on the GME Daily, uh, we've got a really nice bounce setup off our EMA 120 um leading into this week we've had a few other bounces historically off the ema 120 um but this tends to be a really good bounce zone between this and the ema 160 as you can see historically we've got about three bounces or five well this could be the fifth bounce that occurs within the zone between the ema 120 and the ema 160 and that's exponential moving averages um, so we're, we're in a good place for a small bounce, although I think the volume will continue to be low and I don't think the bounce will be, you know, all that great. I think it's going to remain contained kind of within this wedge here. Um, this is what I expect for this week. If, you know, we see a bounce Monday, Tuesday and market action doesn't pull against us too strongly. Um, if that doesn't occur, and uh you know the market dips really hard tomorrow which it could uh there's a lot of instability going on with you know the debt ceiling having not been raised bank of america evergrand uh, i expect something more akin to this where we'll see a dip down towards that ema 160 before realizing kind of a bounce back to that long-term trend um still closing out the week mostly around where we start it possibly a little up depending on how max pain shifts um, and then a quick look at the oscillators for this week. They all indicate flat or slightly bearish. Um, there's really nothing of note here. Uh, ADX is picking up a little bit in the strength of the trend, but 
also you know showing a little bit more bearish divergence there's uh now none of these are really good at predicting a bounce uh they're, they're more trend indicators except for stotch rsi which is there in the middle um stotch rsi could bounce off oversold so that may be the indicator of an incoming bounce uh or the best one that you're going to get from a reverse looking oscillator um but macd and adx dmi definitely not looking great uh, the best case scenario for this is just flat with very little downside. Um, then I wanted to take a quick look at the market. Uh, we've got 19 days, trading days of bearish divergence since it peaked at uh, 1, 4, 454. Um, we're approaching that third Monday of the month that uh, traditionally shows a, a continued dip, and we still haven't regained that correction indicator zone so we're, this is the first time since i've been analyzing this with you guys that we have actually ended a week inside a correction zone um that's really bad it, it did try to regain 435 on friday and it failed ultimately uh you know the institutions didn't want to carry the position over the weekend and so we saw it dip off into close uh i'll be watching closely the chinese market tonight and the pre-market tomorrow morning uh, to determine kind of where the trend is going to go for tomorrow. Um, and, you know, that could possibly lead to some plays. Uh, for those of you that are billionaires, not a lot going on this week as far as pickles picks. Uh, I do expect, you know, uh, this dip to continue. And with the market being choppy and unstable like this, it's a really bad time to be in the market. So I'll have a couple things, but not too much. Um, these are the price points that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, I've I've set new resistance lines at 430 and 425 as we move through this correction zone um, with entering the next correction zone at 420. Um, if this continues to fall off into uh, that third Monday of October on the 18th, we could, in fact, see a crash right around that point. Uh, September 20th dip was pretty significant, um, which, you know, we, we, we discussed the previous Sunday. Um, I, th I think that can continue to play out. If, if, if we do approach that um, in the second correction zone, we may actually see a significant sell-off or, you know, a, a steep, steep correction. Um, I'll be watching that as that kind of aligns with the time I expect GME to be going up right um so you know we we may rise and then dip with the market and then rocket from there uh we'll see how that plays out obviously but um that's something i'm watching for as you know all these dates are starting to line up um our shiller pe ratio down about a point from last week you know just with the market decline there's less money in the market so um not unusual but still super overvalued definitely not at a point where we consider it corrected and normalized um and that's about it i'm expecting about five to seven more trading days before we see any upward movement so you know uh hang in there <laughs> all right uh so i'll take some questions now from you guys whatever you got we got about uh 12 minutes covering a little bit of the Chinese markets today. Uh, we could take a look. Um, let's see. Probably not going to be any... They're 15 minutes behind for me. So um, let's take a look. Uh, Hong Kong down. Shanghai, Shenzhen up right now. Um, I don't even know if this it's been enough time. I'll check back at 9.45 before I close the stream out. Thank you. Every game can't crash if it's not allowed to. Yeah. October 15th, the SEC data is expected to be released after hours. Usually, yes. Um, usually, yeah, usually it comes out after hours on that day. Cookie hat tomorrow? <laughs> no. Well, maybe. We'll see. This hat needs washed, so. 
So much negative beta. Thoughts on Evergrande suspended. Interesting. Um, not surprised. They they've done it once before already, right? You have a free award. Will you give it to me? Sure. <laughs> um, did you shave since the Dillionaire stream? You look fabulous. No, I shaved before the Dillionaire stream. But thank you. I know. I'm looking good. I'm cleaning up. I'm getting the funk of the pandemic off of me a little bit. I've had to go out and talk with people in the real world, so I can't look grungy. Pandora Papers dropping, coming excited. That looks cool as hell. I'm definitely excited to dig into some of that stuff. What actions if Jimmy offers another at the money offering? I don't expect one anytime soon. Um, the next earnings really far out in November. Um, so yeah, nothing. I don't expect anything in the near term. They were pretty clear that, you know, they had the capital on hand to move forward with their plans and, I don't think they have any intention of releasing more shares at this point. Uh, Ryan Cohen also uh, not incentivized to release more shares as that reduces his percentage of ownership. Looking for timing for a good entry on maybe some calls on GME. I am. I'm looking uh, Elliot Moas. I actually discussed that uh, pretty extensively in the Zillionaire stream today, but I'm looking at November 19th for the near term. Uh, I'm looking out in April uh, for the long term. What was that high you were predicting for the week? Um, it's actually, uh, let's take a look at that. Um, I believe, you know what? Let me just open trading view and check for that price point. I believe the high I'm expecting is around just around a test at 200. So, so right around the $200 mark. That That's the resistance line that uh, you guys are seeing. Uh, one sec. So it's it's right here um, to the high side. It's it's at like 200 on that wedge. 201.52. So I'm, I'm thinking we won't break that $200 resistance. Thank you. Media reporting that Evergreen and Evergreen Property Services have been fully on suspended from trading today. Okay. Well, I mean, that may protect the markets from a continued dip going into tomorrow, but I mean, it's inevitable, right? Like something's going to have to play out with that. China can only suspend it for so long, I think. I mean, <laughs> imagine if we just done that with Bear Stearns back in 08. We're just like, ah, we're not going to, no, just, we're going to put him in the cupboard for a while. Did you get a stripe shaved in your eyebrow? No, I have a scar in my eyebrow somewhere that I've always had since I was a little kid. Uh, 10.15 should also be the effect of DRS on the FTD cycle. Yes, uh, view up, dance cycle. I think we're going to see um, those effects are going to play out differently. I think our rolling total will be greater from DRS, so we'll see a, a net increase day over day uh, due to DRS, and I think we'll see spikes due to the futures contracts so um like obviously they don't have the same effect on on the ftds and so i think we'll be able to discern which is which from the data we get message unclear cookies hat confirmed thank you and good night good night anthony j <laughs> What's the possibility of another offering? Pretty slim at this point. Uh, I'm not concerned with it. Ants Chanderson. Anything B of A chatter is uh, more SS nonsense. RSS nonsense. Um. So I'm holding my expectations out for anything to do with Bank of America right now, as uh, you know, several people had indicated that branches were closed not realizing that it was saturday and they closed at 2 p.m uh, that was like one of the first posts i read <laughs> um yeah banks are usually traditionally closed on the weekend uh, especially sunday so we'll see what happens come monday um you know there is some indication that bank of america may have worked with citadel on some swaps to do with meme stocks and 
you know, possibly more market wide short positions. So it's interesting. Uh, we'll see how it plays out is, is really the best thing you can do is just be aware of it and watch it as it, as you know, this week progresses. Just wanted to say, keep all the time and effort that you put on this stuff. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it's looking so good. They always do. Um, has an e-girl gap in his eyebrow is now confirmed e-girl. Thank you very much, Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's really my ultimate dream. Uh, still no new chair. Um, based on a post I saw on Reddit, I think it might just be in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on a boat. If the spy dips under 420, would that indicate a crash, correct? No, uh, 400 is the point I'm looking at. Uh, under 420 is a very steep correction. Um, anything below 400, I think we're going to see a large sell-off and, and an actual market crash, um, the likes of which we haven't seen in quite some time. Um, but yeah, you, you will see people bailing out of the market under 400. Right now, you know, a lot of people got in in March uh during the covid dip so there's a lot of people are up right so you have to understand where a lot of the current positions are held um and they're up and so they really need to come down a lot for them to you know feel like their faith in the market you know isn't as strong anymore but you know if if people start ending up negative in their spy positions you can bet they're gonna fucking sell them and and more more than likely they're going to take gains if they can and you know that's what starts triggering a sell off in the market which you know leads to more fear and confusion which triggers more selling and it's a compounding effect how much do you pay attention to the one day for rsi not really much our volume's so fucking low that rsi barely matters any any increase in volume jumps the rsi anyway and so it's like it's a bit the rsi is a bit volatile on the daily for gamestop right now not not my favorite indicator i, I watch stotch because i think it's a good momentum indicator um when we're, when we're you know shifting direction but uh not standard rsi chair or move first i don't know uh supposedly i think this wednesday i can call them and cancel the chair finally haven't seen since oh wait no it'd be worse than that much worse um well market crash of like the economy in real life yes <laughs> i think this might get a 200 less at the bottom it's possible when you talked about ftd spilling out can you explain like i'm five what that means um if you go check out dr gingerballs t plus 69 dd uh that might give you a good idea of what I'm talking about, Protege Son. It's pinned to my I, I I published it for him so it would get a little more notoriety. But um it's pinned to my Reddit profile. It's one of the the top posts. Um and you can you can get a better idea of what I'm referring to is they're unable to um kind of clear these FTDs. Yeah, you know, they're constantly building this position in FTDs as they suppress the price. Uh via short positions short-term short positions right now this isn't this has nothing to do with like the long-term large short position carryover from you know like 2014 this has to do with the week by week price suppression we see on the stock um which is you know separate from from the massive uh short position that they've carried over did the banks pass the trilly test I don't know when it was due by. Um, I don't know if it was due at market open on Friday or market close. So we'll see tomorrow. Um, do you stotch one day? Yeah, I use one day. Uh, sometimes four hour, but not on GameStop. Not right now. If, if a volume picks up, I might. Uh, Chinese markets are closed until Thursday for national debit. Hang Seng down 1.65% as of 15 minutes ago. Okay. <clears throat> So not looking good. Are we looking at 29 levels of crash? Yeah, I think that's closer to something like that. Although we'll see, you know, the modern economy is much better, much more resilient than it was back then. And so it's possible that, you know, uh, even if we do get a crash, it could correct very quickly. I mean, look what happened in March of last year. The bounce back was in rapid and strong. So... <clears throat> 
the DF grieve creating its cat persona. So in the future, you can say not a cat to Congress sending us the not a cat message secretly. And yet all of his shares in E-Trade after that months after that. So I got to disagree. What's up with the Pandora reports? No idea. I'm not a journalist. I haven't even read them yet or looked at them. It's millions of files, I think. It would take years to dig through it all. That's super concerning levels. Yeah. Stock up on food and water. <laughs> I don't know about that. If stuff is actually going on with B of A, do you think it would be related to the one trillion? Um, It could be. I don't see how they'd have an issue. I mean, based on their holdings uh, and, like, like, liquidity i don't see how they'd have an issue posting that as you know it's collateral right like so it's it's not like they're losing that money they just they're just posting it you know to cover their margin um so yeah i, I don't think it'd be an issue but maybe i think that bounce last year was girding and is prime for a big one yeah how many shares did you acquire for Lock Beautifier? <laughs> I actually donated it, uh, which everyone will be super happy about when I cut it. I, uh, to, uh, for, for people with cancer. All right. And, and I just wanted to close that, that that's enough questions for tonight. Uh, we'll do one last quick check of, Hang Sun, um, looks like it gapped down on open uh, pretty significantly. And trading at 24, 324 right now. Uh, yeah, not looking good. Uh, gap downs are bad, especially on a market open. Um, this, 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 if this continues throughout the night, this will definitely have an effect on uh, the spy tomorrow morning. Uh, one last thing before everyone goes, uh, we here at Pickle Financial have given up on the search for Frag. It has been one week since we began, and we're realizing that continued efforts are not yielding any results. Uh, we wanted to say thank you, Frag, for being a part of a community while you were, and you will be remembered and missed. Um, and that is all. And to the friends and family of Frag, we wish you the best in these troubling times. Thank you all so much. Uh, have a wonderful night, and I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.